Well, in 1988, for a year or so, I'd had a small pain in my, in my lower groin, just a very insidious little, not an ache, it wasn't even a pain, but it, it was consistent. The first time I knew I was in problem, I was laying on, on a bed in the hospital and this nurse says, quick girls, come over and look. I knew I was in trouble when she said that. And it turned out that, that my right kidney wasn't working. She had never seen a body that had one kidney. And so it was a novelty for them, but uh, at my expense, <laughs> I thought I was going to die. 20% chance, uh, one out of five is not very good. But I told myself, if I've got to go, I want to do it on my terms. I don't, I don't want to die in a hospital room with, with everybody around gawking at me with tubes all down my throat. I said, I want to die in the mountains or along the stream or something. I said, I said dying, dying is very personal. It's something you have to do all by yourself. And to be frank about it, I don't want anybody watching. Uh, and that's when I got the idea to, to hide a treasure chest. The, the problem was that I got well, you know, it, it ruined the story. But I said, well, I, can, I can still hide the treasure chest. And when I decided that I was going to hide the treasure chest, I was fortunate to find a beautiful little 10-inch square Romanesque cast bronze treasure chest that, that was beautiful. And it took me a while, uh, a couple of years, to, to fill that thing up with things that I wanted to. I wanted the treasure chest to, to be visual enough to excite someone's imagination. And I wanted it to be worth enough money so that to, to in, inch them out the door and into the woods. But yet the treasure chest was small and so I had to, uh, everything said gold and rubies and diamonds and emeralds and sapphires. And so that's what I did. There are 265 gold coins in, in that treasure chest. Most of them are American eagles and double eagles. Some ancient Middle Eastern gold coins. I can't read the dates, but I think we're talking 12th, 13th, 14th century. There's a lot of ancient pre-Columbian artifacts, gold frogs. There are two ancient Chinese carved jade figures uh, that are wonderful. Uh, I think I said in my book, when, I, when the treasure chest was ready to go, I had a little a bracelet, a silver bracelet with 22 disc turquoise beads in it. The turquoise beads had been found by Richard Wetherill at Mesa Verde the very first day he discovered Mesa Verde. In the late 1800s, he crawled down into that place and picked up those 22 little turquoise beads. I won that little bracelet in a pool game, shooting pool with Fred Harvey's grandnephew, Byron Harvey. And that's how I acquired that thing. So it has sentimental value to me, but that was the last thing I put in a treasure chest. And the thought came to me when I put that in the treasure chest and closed the lid, the thought came to me that a little part of me is in that treasure chest also. Was that part of your motivation, can, can you explain, was that part of your motivation in creating this treasure hunt? I had several motives, though, too. As a matter of fact, a lady from, a reporter from Texas called me on the phone, and she said, Mr. Finn, I've read your book. She said, that's a very strange book. She said, who is your audience for that book? I said, lady, my audience is every redneck in Texas that's, that, with a wife and 12 kids who lost his job, but he has a pickup truck. I said, that's my audience. Tell him to throw a bedroll in the back of his truck and head out. My main motive in writing the book and hiding the treasure was to, uh, was to get kids off the, off the couch today, away from their little texting machines, and go out and smell the sunshine. And uh, er, er, na nature is a wonderful thing. So why, why, use, um, why use a poem? When I had the treasure chest, I knew what I was going to do. I needed a vehicle that would tell people where the treasure chest is if they could figure it out. And I, f I told myself the, the best way to do that is write a poem. So I wrote the poem, and, and I think there's uh, 24 stanzas maybe. Uh, I don't remember, but there are nine clues in that poem. If you can follow the clues, starting at the first one, they will take you to
Then told people not to go looking for treasure chests on top of the mountains, some place where a 79 or 80 year old man can't take it up there. Fern mentioned if he stood where the treasure chest was, he could see trees, mountains, animals, and smell wonderful smells of pine needles, pinion nuts, or sagebrush. Those are the impulses that would come to his mind. One clue follower believed not that the booty is his primary motivation. Fern's treasure hunt has turned into something bigger, something more meaningful. He said, Forrest Fern is the hider of undiscovered dreams for thousands of folks who go looking for that treasure and discover not the place where the treasure is hidden, but the place in their hearts where the adventure sleeps and trails begin. The 10-year treasure hunt for a million dollars chest of the gold puzzle is finally solved. On June the 6th, 2020, when Forrest Fenn made the announcement in a brief post he sent to a blog used by the searcher community, he said, It was under a canopy of stars in the lush, forested vegetation of the Rocky Mountains and had not moved from the spot where I hid it more than 10 years ago. I do not know the person who found it, but the poem in my book led him to the precise spot. I congratulate the thousands of people who participated in the search and hope they will continue to be drawn by the promise of other discoveries. So the search is over. Forrest Fenn hopes the person who found the treasure will never reveal the location where he found the chest to preserve the wild life there and prevent other explorers from following his trail, which could be dangerous. Forrest Fenn had always said it was difficult to find, but not impossible, and that person had proved him right. To some, Fenn was a hero, providing a way to instant wealth and adventure in the great outdoors through the treasure hunt. Forrest Fenn passed away at the age of 90 in September 2020. Shortly before Fenn's death in September, a woman filed a suit and said, Whoever found the treasure had done so by hacking her texts and emails. In December, a medical student from Michigan, Jack Stuve, said he had found the treasure chest because the lawsuit forced him to give up his anonymity. Responding to the allegations, Stuve said the case is meritless. He wrote revealing articles on social media about his two-year search for the treasure honoring Fern's life. He said, I hope that place will always remain as pristine as when he first discovered it. Two people could keep it a secret. Now one of them is dead. <laughs>